Hey everybody, thanks for joining White Dog Outdoors. Today we're going to be talking about the Garmin Striker 4 and we're going to be getting in depth. I wanted to do a pretty comprehensive look at the Garmin Striker 4. I've used this guy for two full seasons both on the ice and in my solo canoe in soft water and um, I've got a pretty good feel for how I like to set things up. So I want to run through you know, today's video is going to be about all the different settings that I use for it, the features and functionality that it comes with, the modes that I like to use in different situations, um, basically how would you get the most out of this particular device, and then there's some added pieces too, there's multiple transducers you can hook up to it and everything like that. We're going to get in depth with that today. Alright, so quick overview, my, my quick overall thoughts on this guy is, Honestly, I do believe that this is the best sonar unit that you can get for the price out there on the market. I don't think there's anything that's going to beat this guy for the price. It packs in a ton of functionality, ton of clarity for almost a ridiculous price. Um, so I found it to be incredibly flexible. It does both the flasher mode and it does the traditional graph mode. And within the traditional graph mode, there is a lot that you can do with it. There's there's several modes that you can use for different kinds of things. I found it to be everything that I really need it to be um, in pretty much every situation, honestly. Um, the clarity that I get on this thing blew me away. For such a small device, um, I fish over 100 feet deep for lake trout, and so I really need to clearly be able to see my jig at 100 feet deep or more and I need to be able to see those lake trout coming up and then as their lake trout are chasing that bait I need to be able to see that separation between the two and I gotta tell you I was wickedly impressed with how well it does that a lot of it comes down to the chirp technology that we'll get into a little bit later but man this this thing packs some serious power and serious clarity into your fishing I was wickedly impressed by it and I mean what can you say for under 200 bucks it kind of blew me away that it could do everything that it could do for under 200 bucks. Overall, I do definitely think it's the best the best sonar unit on the market that you can get for this price. Um, a couple of drawbacks. It's got a small screen. You know, it, at first I felt like it was okay. When I'm fishing Lakers and over 100 feet deep, I tend to like end up leaning forward a lot as I'm trying to see this because I'm trying to see the screen. I do wish it had a bigger screen, but for 200 bucks, how can I complain about that? And then the last part, um, would be that you can't put maps on this thing. Um, there's no built-in maps or anything like that. There's no Navionics chips you can put in it. Um, so it does do GPS. You can do waypoints and everything like that, but it's not going to be a great navigational unit or anything like that. Definite drawback is it doesn't have any maps. Again, for 200 bucks, I really don't think I'm complaining about that, though. So let's dive into a lot of the settings here. The first thing I want to show you is just the really general stuff. Um, there are two major modes you can use this in. There's the traditional and the flasher. Um, you know, I am not on the water right now, so it's not going to look like I'm on the water, but we're going to be diving into on-water demos with these things as we go through them. So first I just want to show you the traditional view is, is your typical graph. There are lots of settings we can do within here that we're going to show you in depth later, but this is your typical graph mode. Right. If I back out, there's also a flasher mode. If you're tip if you're used to using a flasher, you know you can also you can still do that on this on this device right here. Okay, so those are just the real basics. For most of this stuff, we are going to dive into the traditional, and we're going to go through a lot of the basic settings. So let's go into tra traditional, and I'm going to hit the menu button. When I hit the menu button, we're going to have a, a bunch of stuff pop up. There's a lot of different things that are in here. I don't. There's some things I don't change. So range. This is an auto sensing depth. I don't really need to go in and set this. If I want to, I can use my left and right arrows to set my depth and you can see the depth is changing. Um, I'm just gonna go back down, set that to auto. I don't really need anything other than auto. Back into menu. So you see that set to auto. Now gain, gain is basically the sensitivity of the reading. So sometimes you'll see a lot of noise. That's a situation which we, you wanna reduce the gain. Sometimes you won't be able to see your jig as well or the fish as well. That's a situation which you probably wanna increase your, your gain. So you have options in here. I'm gonna hit the enter. We'll go in. You can see that there's a couple of options here. There's auto low, auto medium, auto high. I usually start with auto low, but what I find is that a lot of times I want to get out of auto, I want to go into the manual setting. So I'm going to hit the up arrow, and then I can start using my keys here, my, my right and left arrows. And I can set, you can see how much noise there is when I, when I go all the way over to the right, and it's 100%. And as I start to decrease it, a lot of my noise starts to decrease. And so here, you basically want to balance 
being able to see your jig and the fish with, re with reducing the noise. This is something you're going to adjust while you're on the water. For now, I'm just going to leave it to auto. We're going to leave it to auto medium. Okay, go back into menu. Um, frequency is something we're going to talk about more when we talk about the actual transducers. Zoom options is something we're going to talk about when we go into more depth on the actual, um, on the different modes. And then the overlay numbers. Um, just real quick, I'm going to back out. You can see our overlay numbers. I have the depth, I have the temperature, I have the speed, and I have the time. Okay, so if I go back into my menu and I go down to my overlay numbers, those are exactly the things you can see here that I have on. You can literally just toggle these on and off um, is as easy as that. I don't include the navigation stuff. I don't include the compass. I don't include the device voltage. These are the settings that I like. The speed is good for when you're trolling. Um, you know, that's something you don't need while you're ice fishing, but if you're using this in any kind of boat, that is a good one to have. Okay, so we'll back out of here. And then in sonar setup, there's a couple of things that we're going to take a look at. First one is the scroll speed. Um, I leave this at fast most of the time. A lot of people like the auto or the ultra scroll. Some people feel like the, the faster that's scrolling, the more live feedback you're getting. And I, I definitely agree with that. I leave it at fast a lot of times because when I'm reviewing my video, it just makes it easier for me to see a little more history. Um, so the slower you go, the, the more history you'll see, but the slower reaction you'll see from, from the bait and from the fish. So I usually leave it at fast or auto, or ultra scroll. Back out of there. Um, under appearance, there is one thing I'm going to tell you you need to do right away, and that is go to your fish symbols and turn them off. You want to learn how to use this sonar and, and read the actual real data coming back. You don't want a bunch of fish symbols popping up and confusing things. You can see this is what the fish symbols look like. I I, it is off and I will leave it off. This is the first thing you should do is turn this off. Okay, we'll go back out. A scope is something we're going to hit later. That's something that's really important, uh, but we're going to hit that when we go into the modes. You can also play with your color schemes if you want. I just leave mine on the blue, but you can go in here and you can see there's a whole bunch of different color schemes. I don't really care about that. I like the way that the blue looks and that's really all I need. Okay, we're going to go into the noise rejection. Um, this is actually helpful. Um, when you're out on the ice sometimes and there's other people around you, you'll get some interference sometimes. And so either, you know, different sonar units that are, that are throwing interference or different things in the water, you can go into this setting and you can reduce that interference. Um, you know, the, the higher you toggle it, the more interference you're going you're gonna to wean out. So, um, you know, this is something you can use if you're seeing a lot of interference in there. First, I would start with your gain. Try to lower your gain a little bit to see if that is what it is. If it's not, then you can go into interference and see if you can reduce some of that noise with this. Okay, we'll back back out. Um, surface noise, you'll see along the, along the top part of the graph or the top part of the flasher, you'll sometimes see, a lot of times you'll see a lot of kind of clutter there. Um, if you go into surface noise and you say hide this, right, I just toggled it to show, I just toggle it to hide, it's going to hide a lot of that surface noise. So if something does come through in the top of your water column, it's going to be easier to see. So this is something that I, I leave off. Um, I do want to hide the surface noise. The TVG is just another level of surface noise reduction, so that's something you can go in. Again, you can play with those settings if you feel like you need to, if you're getting too much surface noise and it's getting in the way of anything that you're doing. Okay, so now let's get into some of the modes where we're actually going to fish so that you'll get to see the different ways that we're actually going to be able to see these fish. So let's start off with the flasher. We're going to go into the flasher and I actually have online demos for what we're going to do. So I'm going to, I'm going to cut to these online demos here shortly, but just to give you a, a little preface of what this is going to be, we're going to start with some shallow water pan fishing. Um, you get to see what it looks like in shallow water with these fish coming up and, and identifying the baits. And then I'm going to kick over to some deep water lake trout stuff where you're going to see that I'm in much deeper water. And in those situations, the way we fish lake trout is we get them to chase. So you're going to see me when a fish shows up, I'm going to take that bait away and you're going to see that fish following the bait. This is really, really awesome to be able to see that. It's really key to be able to see that target separation when we're doing those things. So let's go ahead and cut over to those live demos. I'm going to drop my bait down. I wanted to try to catch a couple of fish so you guys can see what this is going to look like. Um, you'll see dropping down the right side starting right there, right about 3 o'clock there. You'll see my bait and I'm just slowly lowering it down. And I'm going to bring it all the way down to the bottom just so you can see what the bottom is. I'm in 13 feet of water. Um, when a fish shows up you will distinctly see the colors. There will be the, the, um, the orange and the red showing up. Right now what you see jigging on the lower left side 
is is my actual jig all right we just had a fish show up i'm at the nine foot mark and we got two fish down below one of them is coming up to me right now he's right on it you notice if i lift it up it's going to separate see how it separates he might not be interested he's dropping back down on me all right have another fish coming right up he's coming right to my my bait he's like whoa he took off fast he took off fast that is very unusual. I wonder if something chased him away. Here he comes. Here comes another one. He's coming back up. He's not. They are tough right now. They are tough. I'm going to drop it right down on top of him. See if I can get him to do something. He's dropping away from it. Oh, he's, oh, he's on it. Got him. Got him. That's a decent one. You can see I got a nice bluegill with my Garmin telling me exactly what to do. So really, really happy with the way that this thing performs. It tells me exactly what I need to know. So far, so good with this thing. I really, really like it. Whoa, you might want to get down in the hole, buddy. Oh, he's coming up to meet it. I dropped it down. He's coming up to meet it. Now we got to take it away. See if we can get him to chase. Oh, he's chasing. Come on, baby. Do it. Do it. You're not getting close, though. You're not getting close enough. He's going back down. We're going to drop it back. Oh, he's coming back. You never know. Bring it to him. Lift up. See if you can get him to chase again. He's following, but he's not, he's not into it. He's not into it. Okay, so I hope that helped you guys see what, what, what it's going to look like in both shallow and deep water when you're jigging for fish and what the lures are going to look like and what the fish are going to look like as they come up and, and you know get close to biting and everything. So ultimately, I want you guys to have a really good feel for what it's going to look like so when you go out there, you understand what you're looking for. Okay, so that's the flasher. Let's go back out and now let's go to... The traditional there's going to be a few options we're going to show in the traditional we're going to start with just the basic traditional graph okay we're going to use some on water demos for this as well again we're going to start in shallow water and then go to deeper water but let's kick over to those live demos now come on they're still hanging out watch when i separate lift up they're there there's two fish there and i oh there we go got one that one all right you can see the one jigging up and down is me and the other ones are fish I'm about to get bit here yep and I got a fish on oh here comes one here comes one he's chasing it he's right on it right on it. and oh I missed him let's see if he's still following oh he went back down he's coming back up He's coming back up, and he went back down. We're going to chase him back down. Okay, so I hope you saw in that last clip, as we were chasing that, that lake trout up, when that fish came up, and he came up really fast, it was hard to see. And so when they were really chasing up, it was really hard to see the distinction between the the fish and the lure and that has nothing to do with the sonar unit it has everything to do with the mode that i'm using so when you're using this the typical graph mode not really easy to see fish that are moving you can see when i was doing pan fish you don't typically move it that much and it was really good for that it was actually pretty really effective for that um but i'm going to show you some other modes that are going to be a little bit more useful than just the regular graph so the first thing we're going to do we hit the menu and we are going to go to our zoom there's a few zoom options here that are going to be useful so right now i have it set to no zoom but you can set it to a bottom lock i don't really use this um, it locks to the a bottom portion um, what i typically do is i go into manual okay i'm going to have complete control of what i want to do okay i'm pretty much only going to do this when i'm fishing lakers going to be fishing deep water and what this is you can see i've got the entire water column from zero down to the bottom and then in this bottom, I have this little white section, this little white box right in here. 
that is expanded on the entire left side. So that gives me the entire from about 33 feet down to 50 feet expanded. So what I can do here, you'll notice up top, I'm on zoom. So if I move my left arrow and my right arrow, I can expand this zoom area. You can see I just shrunk it down. And what it's doing is it's giving me a greater detail over here on the left side because I've got less area over here on the right side. Or I can expand it by hitting the left arrow. Okay. Um, I'm going to bring it back down to where I typically have it, which is right about there. And then if I use the up or down arrow, I'm going to move from zoom to depth. I usually leave it on the bottom, but if you wanted to use and see another part of the water column, you could go to depth. And then I could use my left arrow to go up. You can see now I'm moving up through the water column, or I can use my right arrow to go down. I'm going to go all the way down back down to the bottom because that's where I'm going to leave it. So ultimately, in this zoom mode, you have complete control of where you want to zoom right? I do find this very useful and we're going to cut to some on water action where you get to see this in action and you can see the difference. So when I'm lake trout fishing, I'm in deep water. I'm in 100 feet a lot of times and when there's a fish coming up, it's going to be hard to see over here because it's going to be a lot smaller. When I have it zoomed in over here, you're going to see a much brighter mark come up the left side and that's why you would use the zoom. Well, you can kind of see what happened there. I wasn't paying attention. Freaking thing hit. Oh, man. Oh, he's coming. He's coming still. He's kind of... Oh, even after he was hooked, he was coming. Now he turned back down. Okay, now that we have the zoom, I'm actually going to... Um, I'm going to back out of here. I'm going to make sure my zoom is actually set to off. Um, just because the next setting, I don't want this on. So we're going to go to no zoom. We're going to go back into the menu. And the real key, the real great thing for the way ice fishermen fish is you want to see a lot of detail of what's happening at that exact moment. So there's a great mode called A scope. And this is where we're going to see a ton of detail. So we're going to go into sonar setup. We're going to go down to appearance. And we're going to go to A scope. This is always on on my device. I only have it off now because I'm doing demos, um, but I always have this on. So now watch when I back out of here and I go, I now have this entire little right column over here is a live flasher. That's going to show me my bait. It's going to show me any fish and it's going to show me what's happening at that moment when it's live. Okay. And then this left side gives me a lot of room for my history, which I, I really like to see that history. It's kind of cool. You can see the way they're chasing and everything, but we got lots of live action demos for that stuff. So let's go ahead and cut over to those right now. Here comes one. Here comes one. Real, 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 real. Yeah. Here he comes, here he comes. There's two fish coming, actually. It's wow. two fish, two fish. Keep wow. going, just like you are. Come on, go. Oh, they did that to me last time I was here. I got one. Oh, you do? I didn't even see it. <laughs> oh. Oh, my God. Yeah, there was two fish. There was two fish. That's awesome. The other one's still there. But usually, here oh, comes here one. Here comes these really slow, but see what he does. Go, 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 go. Yep, yep, keep exactly. going, keep going. Keep doing that. Here we go. Here we go. Hit it, buddy. Just keep going, just like you are. That's a swipe. Here we go. Ooh. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Right. Yeah, he's on. still there. The follow it right up. He followed it from 80 feet down to 25 feet. You can drop back down now. There we go. Chaser. Got a chaser? Yeah. Two. Oh. Go faster. Is he on it? Yeah. I would go a little bit. Yeah, you're good. You're good. Yeah, you got one right on it, and there's still one below you. 
I will go a little bit faster. It usually gets them more excited. Come on, buddy. There you go. Lift, 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 lift. Set the hook. Okay, I hope you guys can see how incredible this particular mode is. Whether you're on the Garmin Striker 4 or any sonar unit, this is by far the mode that I would recommend if you're jigging any kind of um, any kind of fish through the ice. I actually use this when I troll now too in my boat just because I really like the way it, it shows everything. So this is by far my preferred method, my preferred mode for using any, any sonar unit when I'm ice fishing. All right, we're going to back all the way out. And all the way out at the main screen, you can see there's a split frequency. So we've talked about frequencies and the differences between a high frequency and a low frequency, right? It's beam width and the strength. With this particular transducer, I'm shooting at two, uh, two frequencies. I'm shooting at 200 and I'm shooting at 77. So this will actually show me both. So right now I can see on the left side, I'm shooting at 200. On the right side, I'm shooting at 77. So the, the right side is gonna have a wider beam, but less power. The left side is gonna have a narrower beam, but more power. So this gives me a little more capability, a little more that I can see here. And maybe I wanna see it both ways. Maybe I wanna see if there's other fish coming through the water column, or maybe I want real good clarity down deep, right? So that's what this can be used for. Now you can also, I'm gonna back out of here. We're gonna go back into our traditional we're gonna to go to we're gonna turn that a scope back on <clears throat> and show you what it looks like with that on so we'll back all the way out and go down to our split frequency now and now I've actually got everything that I want here um, I've got the the flasher on both frequencies and you can actually do this with zoom levels too. I can do a split zoom if I want to. I'll show you that in a second. But basically I can see everything that I want here. Now the problem is the screen is a little small so it's not gonna, it's not gonna give me a lot of history here when I do this, but it's still pretty cool to be able to see what's happening live action. So I'm gonna back out of here. We're gonna go back up tradi traditional. I'm gonna show you the split zoom. So that is under the menu and then under zoom and we can go to split zoom at the bottom. And when I turn that on, now you can see I've got my zoom function here. So I'm, I'm zoomed in on the bottom, you know, 15, 20 feet or whatever it is here. And so, but I've got the entire uh, water column from zero all the way down to the bottom on this side. So I've got my flasher and the regular traditional. And then on this side, I've got the flasher and the traditional for just that little zoomed in area, right? So now this is really cool. This would actually be my preferred method, but with that such a narrow screen there, I can't really fit a lot of data. If the screen was a little bit bigger, this is absolutely what I would be using. Um, if you have a wider unit that's not a Garmin or even the wider Garmin, this is a great mode that I would, that I would use for that. All right, so let's talk about the transducers. This one does come with a transducer. But it's not specifically built for ice, but it works perfectly fine as long as you have it set up right. Okay, so it comes with a little float that you can connect to it, and the really key here, this is really a boat mount, and it comes with a suction cup that you can suction cup to the boat, um, but it's also got a channel where you can run the wire up the channel and around the back and through a little notch at the top, and as long as you do that, it really does sit perfectly straight. Um, and the real big key is making sure that that transducer is aiming perfectly straight down, so you want to make sure that it is parallel to the bottom of the ice, right? It's got to hang perfectly straight down. That's really the key. Um, and a couple of tricks for that. So when I have people, you know, message me through the YouTube channel and stuff like that, when they're having problems with their sonar unit, that is almost always the case. If there's something that's not reading right, it's, it's because that transistor is not hanging perfectly straight down. If it is off just a little bit, you're not going to be able to read your, your, your jig going down. Um, you're not going to be able to read the fish that are near you. Um, it's, the most important thing is when you're jigging, you absolutely need to see your jig very, very clearly. Um, and if it's off, if it's off kilter at all, it, it won't read well, if at all. Um, so making sure that it's set up and hang perfectly straight down. The other thing is give it a little space between the float and the transducer uh, mount. Uh, that way you make sure that it does hang straightly, uh, perfectly straight down. I've had this float too close before and somehow it got jammed down in there and it actually made it off kilter. I couldn't see my jig. I looked at it, moved this float up, boom, problem solved. 
So it may be a little bit trickier to use this transducer, but it absolutely 100% does work. It's dual beam, it's 200 kilohertz and 70 kilohertz. Um, tons of power, tons of great separation. It uses the chirp technology. Um, I'm gonna show you guys the settings that I use for each of these transducers. This is the only transducer that I have, but um, of the other transducers, what you can do with those. I think the limitation of this transducer over one of the other ones is basically that it's not an ice transducer, so it doesn't hang straight down as easily as you know um, as an ice transducer would so that's that's one of the advantages of an ice transducer it's always going to hang perfectly straight down the other one is i can't really change the width of my beam uh, on demand i have two settings i have 200 kilohertz and i have 70 kilohertz the 200 kilohertz is going to be narrower the 70 kilohertz is going to be wider um, those are my settings i can't really adjust in between that um, the other um, it does come garmin does make two other transducers there's one that comes in at 125 kilohertz, so it's not as strong. Um, if you're going to go for an actual ice transducer, I say go for the bigger one. Um, that is the Garmin GT8HW. I'll have that link down below as well as the recommended ice transducer. Um, that one is going to hang perfectly straight down, no problem. It's built for ice like that. And the other advantage that it gives is it allows you to be able to adjust your beam width exactly how you want. So it goes all the way from 200 kilohertz down to, it goes from like... I'll show, I'll show you on this on here, but it goes from 24 degrees down to like 17 degrees or something like that. I'll show you those settings in, in just a sec. But those are basically the transducers. Those are the things to watch out for. Let's get into the settings. Okay, so we talked a little bit about the different transducers. I'm going to show you how to set those settings. So I'm in the traditional. I'm going to go to the menu button. We're going to go to sonar setup. And we're going to go down to the transducer type. Here's where I can set the different transducer types. So the one that comes with the unit is the dual beam. It shoots at 277 kilohertz. So here's some real basic stuff to understand. The higher the kilohertz number, the more power there is. So the more reading you're going to get back, the more intense reading you're going to get back. But the narrower the beam is going to be. If you want a wider beam but less power, you can go to a lower frequency. So with this one, then my option is a 77 kilohertz. So I can create a wider beam with less power using this. So this is what I'm set to right now. Um, there are a couple of transducers that you can get from Garmin directly. One is the GT15M. That is not as powerful a transducer and you cannot adjust your beam width automatic or like specifically with that. So that's, probably not one I'm going to go for. The Garmin GT8HW is, is what I would say is the preferred transducer. Now these bo both these bottom transducers are built for ice so they're going to hang perfectly straight down very easily. The benefit of the GT8HW is that it allows you to adjust your beam very easily and from 16 degrees up to 24 degrees um, and it's going to hang straight down. So I think that's the better one to go. So I'm just going to show you what that looks like here. I'm going to select that. I'm going to use that particular transducer. Um, again, any of these transducers, um, all the information is going to be down in the links for you guys to see. But we're going to, yes, there's a warning. So we're going to say OK to that. And now when I go back into my traditional, hit the menu. Now you're going to see I have an option for beam width. That's something that didn't exist before, right? Um, so I'm going to go into here. And you're going to see I can go all the way from 16 degrees, so that's a pretty narrow beam, and that's a that's a very high frequency. 230 kilohertz is a high frequency, so that's really high power but very narrow. And then I use the right arrow, and I can switch. You can see as I go down, kind of widen the beam, it changes my my kilohertz as I go along. So I can go all the way down to a, a wide beam of 24 degrees and 145 kilohertz. So if you want to make an upgrade in, a tr in this device, I would say the ice transducer is probably something that you could do. Not 100% necessary, but if you want that advanced feature of being able to shape the beam, then I would say it would be worthwhile. Um, for now, I'm going to back out of this um, and go back into my sonar setup and set my, back, set my transducer back to the way it should be. So I have the dual beam, and that's the one that comes with the device. Okay, so now that we've talked a little bit about the different transducers, I'm gonna show you where you can select your frequency. So um, again, I have the transducer that comes with this. This is just a standard transducer. I'm gonna go into frequency 
and you can see I have some different options here. So I have the Chirp 77 kilohertz, I have the Chirp 200 kilohertz, and then just the regular 77 and 200. So in my opinion, I don't really see a reason why I wouldn't go with Chirp technology. So Chirp is basically compressed high intensity radar pulse. So what that means to you is that it's basically sending out a, a greater level or a greater sweep of frequencies and it's sending out more pulses and longer pulses. So at the end of the day, what it's doing is it's getting much more data back and it's compiling that data. And what that is going to mean for you is it's going to deliver a higher resolution image and incredible target separation. So being able to see a difference between your bait and that fish or multiple fish that is the most important thing when you're ice fishing is having that separation that clarity and chirp really helps deliver that so i would definitely stick with the chirp um, for the most part i stick with chirp 200 kilohertz for what i do even in shallow water i find it works really wonderfully well um, in deep water it's great if i wanted to go shallower water and i wanted a slightly wider beam or maybe i'm fishing in deeper water but i want a wider beam so i can maybe see a fish are not just deep, but they're swimming through other parts of the water column, then maybe I, I, I turn to the Chirp 77 kilohertz to get that wire beam and find more fish. But these are your options. Typically, I'm going to leave it at Chirp 200, but Chirp 77 is actually really good as well. So we're going to set that. You can see now here I'm at Chirp set, uh, 200 kilohertz. All right, so I want to show you one more thing, and it has to do with the waypoints. So, you know, as we mentioned, this, this Garmin does have GPS, but it does not have maps, but it allows you to do waypoints, and it's pretty easy. You literally hit, when you're out on the water or out on the ice, you literally hit this button right here. It's your waypoint button. Hit that, and boom. Little waypoint thing comes up. I can go in, and I can edit my waypoint, and I can name it. I can do, you know, I can put a symbol on it. I can say what my depth is. Um, I can set definitely some information here. I don't particularly want that right now just because I'm at home and I don't need another waypoint for my home. So I'm going to go and delete that. But it's very easy to set waypoints. You literally just hit that button and it's going to set a waypoint. Um, and so, like, even with this, you can see, you know, it's my waypoints. I got my sonar here and I got my waypoints here. So just another mode of being able to see that. If I want to manage the waypoints I'll go into here is user data and you can see I've got waypoints so it does it does other GPS things too like tracking and routes and stuff like that but again you're not you don't have the map so it's, it's not gonna really look so great um, with, without the maps um, but I go to my waypoints and you see the waypoints that I have in here and these are all just waypoints I set at my home actually because I was messing around so I actually don't use waypoints a lot I should use it a lot more um, but you can manage your waypoints in here so if I want to go into this waypoint I can you know see what it is you can even say like hey navigate me to this waypoint um right now i'm just going to delete a bunch because i really don't need them um but you know the waypoints are useful for marking certain spots you get a hot hole in your ice fishing or you you know find an area while you're trolling that's hitting fish go ahead hit that hit that waypoint button give it a quick name and then you can go back later and manage those waypoints and kind of like get a little more detail in them as you go through all right and i want to talk about a few little tricks things that kind of learned over time by using these devices. Um, the batteries that come with these devices are pretty heavy. They're a lead acid battery, they're really heavy. Um, I basically explored different battery options when I decided that I wanted to take this to backcountry ponds. And so I started looking at lithium ion batteries. Um, if you want to extend the life of, so first thing I'll say is the batteries that come with this, they do last. I didn't have any problem running it for a full day ever on a battery, but if I was going on for multiple days, maybe you'd start to have an issue. But lithium ion batteries, they're way lighter and they're more powerful, so they're going to last longer. Um, if you want to make an upgrade, you know, that would possibly be one place you'd make an upgrade is in a different battery, make it a little easier to carry around and give yourself a little bit longer uh, life on, on the battery itself. One thing to, to note is that it does require a separate lithium ion battery charger. So I'll link as much information as I can below for that stuff as well. Um, and a couple of things to be aware of when you're, when you're fishing sonar. So we've talked you know, about beam width and stuff like that. When you're fishing near a drop-off, um, you know, when, if, say I'm in 70 feet of water, but I'm fishing near a drop-off, and the cone of the sonar is hitting an area that's 60 feet deep, but I'm really in 70 feet deep, um, it's going to read that it's in 60 feet deep because it's going to take that first return and say, okay, that's where I am. Um, so I've been in situations like that where I've been dropping my lure down, it hits the bottom on the sonar, and it just keeps going. And it goes for like another 8 or 10 feet, and I'm like, whoa, I can't see anything on the bottom. That's where all my fish come from. This really isn't really very useful, 
right? So that's that's an area where number one, either I'm going to move a little bit further off of that drop off so that I don't have that issue, or I can try you know adjusting the beam width. Um, I'm usually shooting at 200 kilohertz anyway, so I can't go any narrower than that, right? So usually I'm going to move, but just something to be aware of how sonar reads. It's going to take that first return and say, oh my god, that's the bottom, and then you might, you might not be able to see the, the full rest of the water column. Um, so one thing to be aware of there. Um, and just be aware, uh, we've probably already talked about this, but you know, 200 kilohertz is going to be a narrower beam, 70 kilohertz is going to be a wider beam. You know, situations where you might want a wider beam is, you know, say you're fishing in deep water, but you want to you want to see if there's other fish that are that are swimming around at different depths. So like that might be in a situation which you want to widen your beam. So maybe you shoot at 70 um, kilohertz instead of 200. Um, or if again, if you're close to a drop off or even a, a, a steep wall, we sometimes fish lake trout in 100 feet deep, but we're really literally right next to this rock wall. Um, and what will happen is the sorna will bounce off and it'll, it'll ricochet back and you'll get all sorts of stuff lighting up on your graph. And it makes it completely unusable. You know, that might be a situation where you want to try to narrow the beam a little bit or, again, move away. Um, so these are just things that I've seen out on the water that are confusing at the time. And you're like, what the heck is going on? And you figure it out. But if you're too close to any obstruction, it may, it may, um, it may send a little bit of interference in there. Um, and then finally... Um, there's, I, I find that when you're using braided line, um, and I, I love using braided line, honestly, but it holds air. And so as you start to drop down your lure the first time, or even if you've had it up and you bring it back down, um, you'll see a bunch of surface clutter. You'll see a bunch of stuff. So I, I, have a video, I have video of this as well. But you can see in this, like, look at all the disturbance that's going down there. That's all air bubbles that are in the line. And as, as, they, as the line soaks up the water and gets rid of the air, that clutter is going to go away. So don't be too concerned about that. Give it a little bit of time. That should clear up as you're going along. All right, so we've been through a lot. I hope it's been helpful. Obviously, the goal was for anybody that's interested in buying this device to understand the, the different settings, how I would set it up, the different functionality, the things that you're going to be able to do with it, and to actually be able to see what it's going to look like when fish are around and be able, you know, and, and how that's going to feel. Um, so I hope that gave you a good feel for what you'd get if you bought this device. Um, again, everything's down in the description. If you want to see everything that I use, I'll have it down in the description. But um, anyway, I hope this has been helpful and that it helps you be successful out on the water. And uh, we'll see you guys soon for our next adventure.